All right, I'm clear. Hey, clear. Folks, welcome to the Dennis Miller Show. I am the aforementioned Mr. Miller. What are we doing this hour? Damn it! Let's do some radio today. <laughs> what do we got? What's the little man put together here? In our next segment, we'll talk to Mark David Henderson. All right. Usually a three person, a three name person. I'm activated by. Anybody who feels the need to tell you their middle name, I feel, has something to say. He doesn't want you to think he's just Mark Henderson. No. Or Mark not. Louise Henderson. <laughs> Mark David Henderson. He is the author of a new book, The Soul of Atlas, Ayn Rand, Christianity, and a Quest for Common Ground. I don't know, seeing as I think Ayn Rand, uh, uh, not a believer. So we'll have to see what the hands across the water moment is here and uh, what Mr. Henderson perceives. I had an idea for a play, by the way. Uh, maybe I'll tell her about it, a little one-act play where Ayn Rand and Barack Obama meet for a cocktail at Bemelman's Bar in the Carlisle and just kick it back and forth <laughs> about uh, about objectivism and socialism. And uh, then I thought, well, you'd have to write that. And I thought, mm, yeah. Here's my question about that. Who picks up the check? <laughs> just, Barack cuts it up into little pieces <laughs> and gives everybody else in the bar one piece of it. <laughs> We'll take a break. Uh, come back. Mark David Henderson. That was the Soup of the Day. This is the Dennis Miller Show. Oh, when the sun sinks down and burns the tar up on the roof. Hey, folks, welcome back to the uh, Dennis Miller Show. Dennis Miller here, basking in the glorious wake of modest achievement that's coming across the transom. Joining us now is Mark David Henderson, who is the author of a new book. You know, I'm a big Ayn Rand proponent. The Soul of Atlas, Ayn Rand, Christianity, A Quest for Common Ground. Welcome to the show, Mark. Thanks for having me. Um, first off, your thoughts on uh, objectivism in uh, the macro and Ayn Rand. Uh, what, what, what is your take on her? Well, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big enthusiast of Ayn Rand. Uh, I've read pretty much everything she's written, and uh, there's a lot to appreciate in her philosophy. Um, there's some things to uh, critique, but I'm really talking about common ground between Ayn Rand's philosophy and Christianity, and uh, that's sort of my heritage with a, a bunch of crazy stories that have come to that. Well, let's get to those in a second, but it is interesting to note that the Library of Congress and the Book of the Month Club survey uh, readers have ranked the Bible number one and Atlas Shrugged number two as the two books that have most influenced their life. So to look for areas where they commingle certainly is an honorable task. But now, what did you mean by your previous statement about what sort of uh, incidents and experiences? Well, you know, it's it's about my two fathers. So John, my stepfather, is uh, a follower of Ayn Rand. Dad is a devout Christian. And I grew up with both of these men speaking into my life. Mm. Um, they're quirky and brilliant in their own way. And, uh, of course, growing up, I wanted their approval desperately. And so I went on this uh, exploration to reconcile these two worldviews and the men that, that had them. I'm trying to think. I've, I've read a lot about Ayn Rand, uh, but uh, I, I, is it just flat out she's an atheist? Oh, she's a big-time atheist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, In fact, she made the statement that she wants to be known and remembered as the greatest enemy of religion that ever lived. Uh, so, you know, there's not much common ground when you start there, but... Uh, well, there is the religion I thing. I knew she... Uh, yeah, I knew the religion thing, but I, I, she did not believe in any... She believed in just the self as the higher power, right? Yes. So um, so the existence of God is really a, a non-starter and, and off the table enough. with her. All right. Um, well, obviously, there's a bunch of, uh, shall we say, polarized ground in between Christianity and objectivism. Give us a few of the areas where you see common ground. Once again, we're talking to Mark David Henderson. The book is Soul, The Soul of Atlas, Ayn Rand, Christianity, A Quest for Common Ground. Uh, elaborate on some common ground. Well, you know, ironically or, or uh, unexpectedly perhaps, I've found common ground in politics where nobody 
nobody finds common ground, as you know. And uh, and and the things particularly are um, the the personal responsibility, individual liberty, um, limited government, and uh, and and I think they both would come to capitalism uh, and stand on that ground in the same place. Mm-hmm. So capitalism, another. I'm sorry. Say it again. Um, I was wondering if there are any other areas beyond capitalism where you see this common ground that you're speaking about in your book, the soul of Atlas, Ayn Rand, Christian. Yeah, so I think, I think, or is it solely you know, capitalism? Well, I think the the idea of limited government, uh, the idea of um, what should the government's role be in a in a successful society and a successful culture. I think they'd both come in and say, uh, you know, John would say, as an Ayn Rand follower, he'd say, listen, um, capitalism is the only system that values the individual and rewards productivity of the individual. Uh, Dad would come to it and say, you know, socialism is doomed to fail because it doesn't recognize the inherent selfishness of individuals uh, and and actually um, depends on them be, being benevolent and naturally altruistic. Uh, furthermore, capitalism usurps the um, you know uh, 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 in a in a an area where you've got uh, the government coming into uh, people's lives inordinately in a way that they may not necessarily uh, should be. They're usurping the role of the church. They're usurping the role of, of charitable individuals who, by their own free will, are choosing to um, help others. Do you think and this book just... might in some way be an homage to the two men you admire and I assume love, and uh, as opposed to would Ra- Rand bridle at you lapsing it into Christianity and would Jesus Christ bridle at you lapsing it into uh, objectivism? <laughs> That's a great, great point. I think, and I, I've thought many times myself, who would think it more blasphemous? Uh, <laughs> you know, Ayn Rand followers are Christians um, that uh, that I'm trying to come to common ground here. I think that there's some amount of bridling um, that's going to go on, as you put it. But I think um, when you look at uh, the the common ground that I've described and, and the soul of Atlas goes on to describe, I think people say, yeah, I've not thought it from it, uh, thought about it from that perspective, and, and it really does work. Mm-hmm. We're talking to Mark David Henderson, The Soul of Atlas. Ayn Rand, Christianity, and A Quest for Common Ground is the book, and the book's website is soulofatlas.com, and you can follow Mark himself on Twitter at M.D. And, uh, Henderson. As I did the research for this, I saw a recent blog post you put up. I had an idea for a book, uh, or a book, a, a one-act play about uh, Barack Obama and Ayn Rand meeting for a cocktail at Bemelman's uh, at the Carlisle <laughs> and discussing uh, their two approaches to things. I see you put up a blog post recently, Ayn Rand meets C.S. Lewis, uh, you, uh, two, two great minds. And I, I'm not a born-again Christian, but if you don't read mere Christianity, I don't know that you don't know that you're not a Christian. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great tome as, uh, in its own way, as great as Atlas Shrug. Tell us about the blog post. Well, I think, you know, as you put it, um, two great minds. And I think that they could talk in a room for a long time about things that they agree on uh, before they ever got to things that they don't agree on. Um, it, it struck me uh, reading Ayn Rand uh, first and then reading C.S. Lewis that they both uh, talk about the same um, there's the same issues, the same topics, and come at it with, with conclusions that are remarkably similar. Mm-hmm. So I thought it fascinating that they were, you know, they were contemporaries. Obviously, C.S. Lewis a little bit before Ayn Rand, um, but there's not much, uh, there's not much interaction between them. Uh, like you said at the top of the, uh, the top of the hour, there was uh, uh, the Library of Congress survey with the Bible number one and, and Atlas Shrug number two. Wow, you know what? Those two books aren't on any one person's list. I can't imagine as being influential in their lives because these two influential worldviews just don't get into the same room often enough. Yeah, I think Ayn would probably bridle more uh, in answer to my early question because I think Jesus Christ tried to be accommodating. <laughs> I think she. Tra- I think you would have been cast out from the salon if you came forth and uh, insisted that you saw common ground with the Bible and their Christianity. You know. 
Yeah, you may be right. You may be right. But nevertheless, I think it's important for these two groups to get together, um, if only to uh, win back or take back uh, some of the, you know, our country from many of the things that we've encountered. Yeah. In the what last will happen, though, decades. if it never happens? Do, or do you even acknowledge that that's a possibility? I like to be a, I think part of the stuff that's led me to objectivism is I'm a hard, uh, rough-hewn pragmatist. And what, what if I told you I don't think you'll ever see these two people in the same room? Well, you know what? Um, I'm going to try to make that happen. Um, mm -hmm. If they don't get into the same room, um, I think it's just going to take us a longer time to uh, make the case about all those things that we agree on because the opponents of the things that Ayn Rand and Christians agree on um, have a huge platform, and, um, and they're, you know, they're formidable. Well, I think it would be pointed out how far apart the two sides are now in the, this thing that always gives me, uh, makes me think. Uh, uh, secularists constantly mock creationists and claim as an alternative route, um, you know, say Darwinian thought. And then later in life, when creationists by and large lean on Darwin and say it's a survival of the fittest thing and people who work the hardest get ahead, then secularists always get all Christian on you and tell you you're not kind enough. It's like they co-opt <laughs> they co -opt Darwin at the beginning of the equation and at the end. And that's such a dichotomy that I – that's why I sometimes think, boy, the fact that they don't even notice that sort of hypocrisy uh, tells me that this is not patchable up. Yeah, um, and, and I, I'm sad to say I think there's, there's other hypocrisies going on as well. I mean um, – you know, the whole the whole battle as you painted that picture takes place when one side is trying to yell louder than the other and trying to, you know, outflank them uh intellectually or spending more money to market their point and so forth and I just you know, I just don't see that as um either either Christian or you know, pragmatic as you put it. Looking at your C V here and I can see that the uh the the two patriarchal figures being at opposite ends of the, uh, and I'm sure they were both good men, but at opposite ends of the ide ideological number line has exhibited itself in your life in more ways than one, studying Victo Victorian poetry and neuroscience at Brown. That is, man is, man is a rope stretched over the abyss, as Nietzsche would say. <laughs> and I'm teetering every moment of the day. So. And, and now I'm a finance guy. I mean, I'm dealing with financial derivatives all day, and uh and, and writing about philosophy. I mean, it's all over the place. I can't help myself. All right. Well, we've been talking to Mark David Henderson, an agile intellect in his own right, the soul of Atlas, Ayn Rand, Christianity, a quest for common ground, trying to perform a juggling act that I'm not sure is performable, but let's give him credit for trying. Thanks for your time, Mark. Thanks a lot. Uh, all right. We'll talk at you down the road. The book's website, soulofatlas.com. And you can follow Mark, as I said, on Twitter at MD Henderson. All right. We're going to take a break. We come back. We do some phone calls. It can be about anything your little heart desires. 866-509-RANT. 866-509-7268. This, this here, oh, this is the Dennis Miller Show. The Dennis Miller